Hello guys, in this video I will be going through the URI configuration file. I will try to explain if possible all the URI configuration file, all the parameters and the variables. So let's get started. I will go to the URI folder. So by default, uh, URI, if you install it from the source code, does not have the URI configuration file with it. So you will have to create one yourself. So to do this, you will need to run the following command. You have to run the udo bin file with the dash dash save parameter. So a configuration file has now been created in your home folder by this name udo rc. So let's kill the udo server and check out this rc file. You have to press Ctrl H to view your hidden files. This is the one. Okay, so now you can see all the options here. The first one you can see is the path to the add-on folder. You can add multiple add-on folders for your custom module and you can separate them by the comma. And you can, you know, pretty much do like this. and then and then save it and if you restart the server Udo will be able to see these modules the next one is the admin password uh, the admin password as you can see is in clear text you can change the admin password from here the next one is the csv separator by default is the comma but you can mm, place anyone you like depend on depend upon your data so there are certain types of data which are separated by semicolon or you know colon etc by default and mostly used is the comma one so we will leave it by default here the let me change the password back to admin the next one is data d and uh, data underscore dir this folder contain all the data uploaded to the udu for example pictures or documents in the one we used to use the version 5 it would store all this data in in the database in postgres but what i think in from version 7 or was is store its data in this folder the all uploads etc are stored in this folder so all the backup strategies with the one we created for the older version will not work for this one i'll be making a video on how to properly create a backup procedure for Udo. So if you are interested you can subscribe and come back to that video later. So the next parameter is dependent score host. Here you can specify where the Postgres is running. Uh, you can specify the IP of the Postgres server here. If it is set to false, which is the default, Udo will assume that Postgres is running on the same server as the one Udo is running on. In my case, it is currently running on this server, the same as the one Udo is running on, so I will leave it at false. Uh, db underscore maxcon is a very important parameter. Here you specify the number of physical connection Udo can make with Postgres. Uh, the formula for this is the number of uh, connection, which is by default 64, into the number of workers, which we will cover later. Whichever is the result, it will be the number of connection Udo can make to the Postgres. You can either increase or decrease the number of maximum connection here, depend upon the configuration your Postgres is running on. For example, if Udo Postgres is running on a very, on a, for example, if Postgres is running on a weaker hardware, you can decrease the number of connection here. If Postgres is running on a powerful hardware, you can increase. The number of connections from here but we will also have to increase the number of maximum connections max, max underscore connection from within postgres so this portion is pretty straightforward the db underscore name is the database name if i recommend that you leave it at false since you will be selecting it from the database manager within udo the db underscore password is the password to the db if you have specified one 
and if you remember I created a user and then I specified a password for it so here you will have to uh, specify that password the password will be provided in a simple plain text uh, no MD5 no nothing and here you have to specify the default port if you do not specify one Uru will assign the default Postgres port here uh, DBL scholar cell mode is equal to prefer which means if SSL connection is available Udo will use it DBL score template mode uh, DBL score DBL score template is equal to template 0 which means uh, Udo will use the template 0 of Postgres when creating the databases DBL score user is set to false which means DB will use the current operating system user and it will search for it if you do not want to use the current user which is the operating system user you have to specify one here dbn score filter here you can specify a filter list of the databases you can use the regular expression to do this for example if you have many databases and uh, you want for a specific user to use only the test databases so you can specify a regular expression like this here so the user will be presented only with a databases that start with the name test so the next one is demo which I honestly never use and I honestly don't know what it does but I'm assuming that you will have to specify the modules which contain demo data so it can be loaded while creating a database into the database so, but that's my assumption I don't know maybe email from so here you have to specify the email address through which uh, Udo will be sending emails to your clients or to the user you have to just specify in plain text the email address for example like this and the next one is geo ip underscore database i honestly don't know never used it maybe i will in the near future if i does i will uh, will create a small tutorial on it as well so this part is pretty straightforward as well here the HTTP underscore enable is set to true so that Udo can be accessible over the HTTP protocol. The HTTP underscore interface is uh, the interface. HTTP underscore interface is the parameter for setting the IP address on which the server will bind. If you leave it empty, it will bind to all interfaces. But if you specify an IP, the Udo server will bind to it which seems like a good idea but if you are downloading the reports and you are on a different IP address or a different port you might get into trouble or the reports might not download so I recommend that you leave it as blank the next port is the port on which you can access the Uru server the default is 8069 which is the XML RPC port so by the way I recommend that you change this port uh, for the security purpose as it is now a well known port and uh, can be used by attackers and can attack uh, attack your Udo server if any vulnerability are found in your Udo server so I highly recommend that you change it to something else by default I will leave it at this the partial import means that if you are importing a huge file uh, from Excel and something happened uh, which forces the Udo to cancel the import if this partial import is enabled Udo will have Udo will have the amount of data which were uploaded before it was interrupted. To set this you will have to specify a file in which the data is going to be stored. You will have to provide a file name to store your data. For example, sorry, I'm using cutting. And that's that. So the next block is the limits that we are imposing on Udo. Limit underscore memory underscore hard is the physical memory. Limit underscore memory underscore soft is the virtual memory. If if any worker that exceeds this amount of memory will be killed immediately and the resources will be recycled. The memory is specified in bytes by default. I think it's by default it is assigned to 256 MB of RAM and uh, I think some 200 MB of virtual memory here you can limit the number of requests a worker can make the default is 8192 
if you wish you can increase this number but this is going to consume a lot of bandwidth so I would set this number as it is here you can limit the number of requests a worker will process before it is being recycled so if your Udo is caching for no reason and uh, there is a huge amount of data it is processing you can always increase the number of you can always increase this limit so that the data is processed but you will need a very powerful hardware to do this here we are restricting the worker from using more CPU time by assigning it the number of seconds it can use for a request. The default is 60 seconds but you can increase the time. If this time limit is exceeded, the worker will be killed. Here we are specifying the wait time for a request by a worker. If a worker is waiting for a request more than 120 seconds, the worker will be killed and the request will be terminated. Here we are specifying the wait time or the real time for a cron job. So it is set to minus one by default, which means the which means Udo will wait indefinitely. Minus one means there there is no restriction on the wait time; it will go indefinitely. List underscore db if set to false will disable the database manager. You will not be able to select the databases, so I recommend that you set it to true. If you wish to data, uh, disable the database selection. I recommend that you use an app from the Uru app, app Store. The one I recommend is Disable Database Manager by Open Inside. It does a pretty decent job. So, so the next section is regarding the logs. Log underscore db if set to true, Udo will store all the logs in database in the Postgres server in a, a table called ir underscore logging. This is the warning level for the logs that is going to be stored in the database if set to true. Now these two are the log levels. The first one is the log level for all modules and the second one is for the Udo server. And these two follow the standard Python log levels. The next one is the log file. If not specified any file here, Udo will throw everything to the standard output. If a file is specified here, Udo will store all the logs to that file. I will be doing a separate video on the logging of Udo since this is a very important topic and it is used a lot in forensics. Here you specify the long polling port which is 8072. This port is used by the server to contact the client. If a client is requested for a, a report and it is taking it is taking time so rather than constantly refreshing the browser the server will contact the client when the report is ready here you can specify the number of workers assigned to cron jobs the default is two but if you wish to run more cron jobs you can specify the number here these two parameters are concerned with the records loaded during wizard the edge limit parameter specify the amount of time the records will be in memory 1.0 means it will be stored in memory for 1 hour and count underscore limit means limit the number of records loaded in memory for wizards if you set it to false it will, uh, it will mean unlimited uh, number of records can be loaded if you set it to true then a limit will be placed on the number of records loaded during wizards in pg underscore path you need to specify the path of postgres Udo need certain utilities from Postgres for example the pg underscore dump and the pg underscore restore to restore and the dump the database the pid underscore file parameter is used to set the process id file for the Udo by default leave it to none because the operating system handles this by default in the proxy mode I'll rather discuss this when I'll be setting nginx with Udo so I'll go in detail there the report underscore gz i honestly don't know what it does but i think it stores a copy of the report internally as well the screencast and screenshots parameter here you need to specify the folder we where you will be saving the screencast and screenshots uh, keep in mind if you are going to use the screencast then you will need to install the ffmpg library for it here in server wide modules we have specified base and web as default this means that 
these modules need to load first because all other modules are dependent on these two modules here are the settings for SMTP uh, you will need to provide the password for your email account the one I, if you remember I specified one at the very top so I will have to specify the password here and the port usually I specify the one for gmail the smtp.gmail.com or google.com I think so you have to specify here if you are using the SSL you will have to set it true and the user which is the username of your email address for example in my case it was afridi.wakar syslog if set to true means it will use the syslog server of the operating system this section here is related to udo testing if test underscore enable is set to true then in test underscore file you need to specify a python file which contains all the parameter needed for testing in the test tag you will need to specify those tags that are specified in the python file separated by a space and translate underscore modules you need to specify the modules for which you want the translation to be available by default it's for all the modules and if set to true Uru will translate all the accent to simple plain English for example there are certain characters in other languages for example Spanish that are not present in the English keyboard so these will automatically be translated to plain old English but this functionality need to be enabled in Postgres as well upgrade on score path is used to specify the folder which contains the migration script uh, I'll be doing a video on this later so I will discuss it in detail later without a score demo if set to true this will disable the load demo data option since you don't want to since you don't want the demo data to be loaded on your production server so if you set it to true here that option will be disabled permanently so now let's talk about the workers parameter the workers parameter if set to a non-zero number will enable the multiprocessing feature of Udo. Here, every HTTP request will be considered as a sub-process. Keep in mind that this feature is only available in Unix family of operating system. That is, it will not work in Macintosh or Windows. To calculate the number of workers, you will have to follow the, fo uh, the following formula. To set the workers parameter, you have to take the number of parameter, multiply it by 2, and then add the number of cron jobs, the max cron threads, which is 2 here. So if you have a 4 CPU, uh, 4 CPU system, multiplied by 2, which is 8, then add the number of max cron thread, which is 2, so 8 plus 2, 10, so I will set 10 here. Keep in mind that a single worker can support up to six concurrent users. Setting this number too low or too high will definitely impact your server. So I would recommend that you use only the formula provided here to set this parameter. So that's it for today. In the next video, I'll be demonstrating the frequently used parameter from Voodoo configuration file. So if you are interested, subscribe and wait for my next video so till then see you